Welcome back to the Oakland Athletics franchise here for the June recap as we have gotten to the month of June and our Oakland Athletics are sitting at 47 and 31 on the season, which is first place in the American West. They have a solid four and a half game lead on the second place Texas Rangers, and they have an even more solid eight game lead on the third place Houston Astros. So the Oakland Athletics not having the just insane season they were last year, but they do have a commanding lead on the AL West and they are getting the job done with a team that's not having, like I said, record breaking pitching. They're not having record breaking hitting. They're just kind of all coming together and it's working and they're somehow winning games and they are just have a commanding lead on the division. Moving on to the league leaders, Jose Abreu is hitting 237 with a 302 OBP, which is not very good at all. He actually has a negative war, so he his bat isn't exactly helping the team too much. I mean, he's driving in runs. Uh, that's pretty much just because he's in the spot to drive in runs. He's our cleanup hitter, so he's going to drive in runs no matter what his average is. And he's got 15 home runs as well, but he does have... 22 doubles, which is fifth in the American League. Sonny Gray, however, another guy who's really not performing that well. He's just having having these stats that are more like more of just team-based stats that are counted towards him, where Sonny Gray is second in the American League and wins with nine. He's nine and five in the season, but he only has a 4.28 ERA, which I mean, if it was a five pitcher, a number five pitcher who was having that type of stats, like a young guy, I wouldn't mind that. But a guy who just won the Cy Young with a record-breaking season, essentially. Uh, not exactly what I'm looking for from him, but he is getting the job done somehow, and he is winning games. Uh, Kevin Gaussman is also a guy who's up there and wins. He's 8-3 with a 2.77 ERA. He is tied for third in wins, and he is the sixth best ERA in the nation in the American League. Now, that's the guy right there. That is he. He's pitching more like our ace than Sonny Gray is. The sub-3 ERA, 8-3 record. And he's top 10 in wins and DRA. He's pitching very well. Hinjin Ryu is also pitching very well. He's 7 and 4 with a 2.96 ERA, a sub 3 ERA, and he's 7th in ERA. He is also basically tied for fourth in wins. Now he's listed as tied for seventh because there's an there's just a whole whole group of people who are tied for third, and there's an even bigger group of people who are tied for fourth. So basically, they just counted as seventh since they're that far down on the list, anyways. But Basically, if he wins one more game, he's in that same group as Gosman. And then Tony Watson has also been able to close out games for the Athletics, as he's 1-1 one one with a 3.29 ERA, and he's tied for thirds in the American League with 24 saves. The A's do have one injury they are dealing with, and that is Brady Slayton. You may have noticed he has not been in the past couple gameplay episodes, and that is because he has a sprained ligament in his knee, so he has not been playing the past few games. That is why other guys have been getting a chance. That's why Romero has been playing a lot more. Uh, Cesar Hernandez is actually on the team. He's gotten some spot start here and there. But Brady Slayton will be back in about one or two weeks, so it's not too much longer. And the team has not dropped into standings because of him being out, so that is a good thing. Adrian Castro, the pitcher who was called up from AAA last year to be to help out in the bullpen, is going to be called up again to help out in the bullpen. He's only pitched two innings so far since being called up, and he has a 4.50 ERA, but they're confident he's going to be able to get that down as they are confident Adrian Castro is definitely a one of the better relievers they have available to them, especially since Edwin, Edmund Roberts just did not do well at all in the big leagues, and he's been sent back down to AAA. Uh, Jose Mujica, the guy we took in the Rule 5 draft from the Tampa Bay Rays, the B potential starting pitcher, who is in our bullpen for the year that he has to be in the in the major leagues without being sent down. He is 2-2 two two with a 4.63 ERA. Not the best of stats, but you're gonna uh, I'll take it. It's not exactly uh, what I was hoping, but it's not awful either. It could be better, but it could also be a lot worse. Uh, Thomas Suzuki, a triple-A catcher. We have done a prospect profile for him when he was a B-potential catcher. He is now down to a C-potential, and he is not helping his case with his triple-A stats, as he's hitting 198 with five home runs, 27 RBIs, and 241 at-bats. Not helping his case to move his potential up anywhere, as that is why he is down to a C-potential from a B. Mikey White, who is a guy who's been raking in double-A ever since this series started, but uh, we call him the triple-A. Can't really get the job done as in 79 at bats. He's only hitting 228 with two home runs and six RBI. Hopefully he can turn things around, but as of right now, it's not looking like it's going to happen. Franklin Barreto is the guy who is in the major leagues. He is not getting a lot of playing time because he's just not really ever proven that he can hit well in the major leagues. And he's a, he's a major league quality player. 
So he's hitting only hitting 205, two home runs, 11 RBI, and 44 bats off the bench. Uh, the thought right now is that he is going to be the trade bait, the main trade bait, the deadline. Uh, we're probably going to keep Eric Pedroza, and Franklin Barreto is going to be the guy who's going to be dangled upon the teams who wants to take a chance, take a flyer on Franklin Barreto, who's still young, still a deep potential, still has value throughout the league. He's just kind of at a position for us where we have a lot of log jams going on right now. Well, there's another idea that I've had, and that is trade Jose Miguel Fernandez, the second baseman, to somebody for maybe a reliever, maybe somebody, another middle, maybe another middle infielder, just somebody, trade Jose Miguel Fernandez because he is getting up there. He's in his 30s now. If he's not, I believe he's 30. Uh, this is the last year of his contract. Uh, I'm not exactly 100% want to just jump the gun and sign him, re-sign him. So I'm thinking that we're probably going to let him go. And since this is the last year of his contract, it's probably more, it's probably smarter to just get some value out of him. And then maybe put Barreto at shortstop and Pedroza at second, or Barreto at second and Pedroza at shortstop and do that. But that's to be decided once we get closer to the trade deadline, which is at the end of the month of July. Moving on to the outfield side of things, Sean Andino is back to being a stud. He did struggle for that first month of the season, but he's been turning things around, and he's hitting up the 275 now with 11 home runs and 36 RBI and multiple stolen bases as well. He's back to being a stud. He is one of our better players. Uh, Monty Mason, but since being called up to AAA, has not been a stud. He's only hitting 259 and 112 at-bats. Uh, he won the Rookie of the Year the first year he got called up, and ever since then he hasn't been the same. He hasn't been able to hit well against lefties, even though he supposedly, his attributes say he should be raking lefties. He just can't hit them, apparently, for whatever reason. Uh, I guess it was a fluke, or maybe he's just having two bad years in a row. But uh, he does not have any options left, so we're gonna we're in a bit of a pickle here, a bit of a struggle, as we do not want to know what to do with Mason. Do we trade him? Do we just stick it out with him? Because if we do send him down to AAA, he has to clear waivers. I don't think he's going to, because we have a couple guys who we could call up who I'm confident are going to produce in the major leagues. Like Juan Lagores, I'm less confident about him. He's hitting 306 with four home runs and 29 RBI and 216 at-bats in AAA. He's the guy who we signed in the offseason to one-year deal. He could come up, possibly play a role. Dean Toscano, he's a guy who's came up the past two seasons, and he's been able to hit well. He was on the World Series champion team last year for pretty much the entire season, the majority of the season. And he's hitting 302 with nine home runs and 30 RBI with 11 stolen bases as well for the Triple A Nashville Sounds in 242 at-bats. He is a possible replacement as well. And then there's, of course, Mark West, who has cooled down a bit of late. He was hitting like 350, I believe, just something absolutely out of this world. But now he's dropped that down at 323, 10 home runs, 40 at RBI, 9 stolen bases. He's still a solid, he's still a solid choice. He could be a guy who gets called up. You never know. Possibly. We'll have to see. And then one of everybody's favorite things to hear about was the draft that happened in the month of June. So now that is the June recap, we are going to go over that. As this year, we took first round shortstop Derek Torin. He is a B potential. We followed that up with second baseman Eric Pere. He is a C potential. And then right fielder Felipe Abreu, he is a B potential, but he is very bad. He's already up there. He's already a older type prospect. I believe he's in his early 20s, like 22, 23. He's not, uh, he's a very low overall. None of his stats are going to really turn out anything. It's going to take him years to be anything, so we did not sign him to a contract. Sh uh, st starting pitcher Daryl Holcomb is a B potential. We signed him. Starting pitcher Chad Franks is a C potential. He was signed. And then the last pick we had was relief pitcher Gary Cochran. He's a D potential. Probably not going to be anything more than just a double A, possibly triple A reliever in his future. So with that being said, that is going to wrap things up here for this June recap of the Oakland Athletics franchise. We are heading into the month of July with a pretty commanding lead on the AL West. First place in the AL West. I have been your host, Jersey Born, and I'm saying goodbye. Say it loud and sing it proud